Hello and welcome back to the Liberland Show. I'm your host, Adam J. Carswell. Today, joined by a Liberland legend, to say the least. I know he's going to play it down. He's a very humble guy. Um, but but looking forward to today's conversation for multiple reasons. First one coming to mind now, Tom. I remember um must have been 2018 when uh, when I first started doing the show. Um, I just remember I was sitting in this little little rickety room in Washington, DC, interviewing you. And I know it's audio only. And I'm like, man, I'm, I'm talking to the Minister of Foreign Affairs for Liberland. Like this is, I can't believe it. It's so awesome. And and here we are now. We've hung out several times since then. Um, always a pleasure. So ladies and gentlemen, Tom Walls, Liberland Minister of Foreign Affairs with us here today. And Tom, uh, how are you on this fine Liberland evening? I can't complain. I'm doing really good. And we're having a lot of fun over here uh, on the side of the world in the Balkans. And um, I came over in, in August for Floating Man. You were here last year for that. And uh, on August 6th, they uh, we, we, were, we were able to go into Liberland starting on, on that date. And I was with the first group of people that went in. And it's been absolutely amazing. Um, we've got people there. We've got two settlements in Liberland right now. And we just had a wedding on the beach on Liberty Island in Liberland on Saturday. And we got to fly over and, and see it. And then we, later we went on, on the boat to uh, wave at some of the settlers. So we're having a great time here. We've, we've uh, generated a, a heck of a lot more interest in Liberland. We've got a lot of press coverage. Uh, and it's, it's really growing by leaps and bounds, let me tell you. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's an exciting time. And um, as you know, I'm a I'm a I'm a new dad and got another one on the way. And uh, oh, yeah, yeah, things are um, things are just going very well professionally now. And it's it's for those who watch the show, it, it's it's been sometimes a challenge to to get back to the Liberland show. And in early August, I looked back on it. I was like, man, I, I wish I could have just been doing like an episode per day because uh, that was such an exciting time. Um, but here we are now. And who knows, maybe we'll we'll spark a fire this is a call to action for anyone who listens to the show. Uh, and my buddy Keaton helps out a lot with this as well. But we're always looking for help and support with Keaton's the Liberland show. So if you hear yeah, it, if I cry now, reach out. <laughs> um, but but Tom, you mentioned a lot of things there. Uh, the wedding, settlements. Um, I made a note here too. I wanted to bring this up because I know you're you're a cat dad as well, right? I am. Um, my I've got my dog hanging out with us here today too and it's one of those things where once you hit record all of a sudden she starts like making noise and getting into trouble so uh if I do have to stand up in a moment we'll we'll, we'll address that as it comes but <laughs> how are the kitties no problem how are they doing? oh well I yeah my my cat Susie I saw her but I went home we went to Washington DC for uh, a gala event and to meet with some congressmen and senators and uh, after that, I spent a few days at home to, you know, take care of some of my affairs because I didn't know I was going to be over here so long. Um, uh, when I was about to leave, uh, about three weeks into my trip, um, Vit said, well, Tom, why don't you stay? We've got a lot going on and uh, we could really use you full time here in Liberland uh, helping out and helping our diplomatic efforts and, you know, helping people who come here and want to stay here. So I said, yeah, sure. Let's do it. And um, so I, I spent a little time back at home to take care of some of affairs and uh, do some things with my business, which is which is running uh, very well. And uh, my nephew's running it right now. Awesome. And uh, I came back after that trip and I'm, I'm here at uh, Ark Liberland Village uh, right near Apatine on the river, on the yes. Danube River. Yeah. Um, and I promise, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to talk about Liberland here in a moment. But for your for your business as well, we have to do some proper advertising and, and marketing. Um, how can anyone listening potentially work with you? I'm not sure what the service is, but always want to help send some leads your way if we can. Yeah, well, I've had to draw down a little bit since I'm over here. Uh, I usually run the day to day business. I sell books. I sell books online. I sell them on Amazon. I sell them on eBay. I sell them on Gunbroker and a few other sites. Um, and, uh, you know, it's it's called Foreign Affairs is, is the name of my business. Nice. So uh, <laughs> I, I've, I've sold several thousand books already, including some very collectible books, uh, some autograph books by the authors and uh, first some really good first edition. Uh, first editions. I sold a copy of Ernest Hemingway's Old Man in the Sea, a first printing of that one. And that went wow. for... 
for a couple hundred bucks. Um, and it's a lot of fun going out there and finding books in dusty old places and finding amazing treasures that nobody nobody has ever even thought of in years. So, But there's people who want them. And uh, one thing I do is connect people who, who want these long lost books with, with the books themselves. That's cool. It reminds me of, um, well, I, actually, I know a couple people that are uh, looking at kind of building their own in-house library and to have kind of like the, it's almost like collectible versions of the books, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, sure. Sure. Yeah. Um, there's, um, I, I do, I, I've, I've sold bulk uh, shipments of books to places like, for example, the Pierce School in Washington, D.C. I've sent them probably five boxes of 30 books each, um, you know, to put it, it's a real, very cool place. And it has this antique sort of atmosphere going on and they love um, really nice books on the shelf. So I've sent them a couple boxes of books. Awesome. So, um, so yeah. and Go ahead. Uh, well, another, another thing that, that comes to mind, world's coolest uh, minister of foreign affairs, Tom Walls, ladies and gentlemen, he's also a DJ. Um, yeah, yeah. And uh, in the past, really the past year and a half, two years, I've kind of ramped up my, my DJ yes. and pr production skills too. So um, you were great, by the way. You DJ DJed Hero last year on stage, and that was awesome. You had a, a lot. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, the, the the whole outside dancing, and that was great. I DJed in Liberland as well, and during the first week uh, of the first settlement, we set up camp at oh, uh, wow. Jefferson Square on Liberty Street, and I I DJed a couple nights there in the settlement. Nice. So, nice. We had a little Bluetooth speaker, and I was playing some, you know. Uh, old Yugoslavian music and I was playing some, you know, rock and stuff and some R and B and some funk and uh, Latin music. And we had, we had a great time. So nice. Yeah. I, I didn't know that, but that's cool. So you can, you can actually take that, that claim then first gig ever DJed in Lieberland. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Unless someone came snuck in there at some point in the past and had a party, uh, which is undocumented. I, I did uh, DJ, uh, you know, first DJ in Liberland first documented awesome well well talking about being there in Lieberland um I wasn't sure if you had actually set set foot there since everything has kind of started so um mm -hmm. I know it's a little bit different dynamic for for you and myself I think as far as I know not being Schengen or EU citizens it's yeah. a little bit more challenging for us to to get there now it's not saying that we can't we just have to be prepared for a certain type of resistance from Croatian police etc um before we talk about all of the Croatian police stuff. <laughs> um, what? Just tell me, what was it like for you being there? Did you spend a few nights there? Uh, tell us, you know, being one of the first settlers of Lieberland, what that experience was like for you. Well, on Saturday, August 6th, I believe it was, uh, we were headed over there anyway. And it just so happened that people just started walking in. Um, the Croatian police would, would check your documents, uh, check your passport and make a record of it. There were two checkpoints and there was the... Um, uh, sort of a parking lot at the time. So we actually drove right up to Liberland and parked and uh, did a check there with the border police uh, who was pulled up on the shore in his boat and did another check by uh, with, at a police car on the way in. And we got to walk into Liberland and the mo we, we were looking on the, on the, on our, on, on the GPS where exactly the border was. And the moment I, I stepped over the border into Liberland was just a magical moment it was fantastic it was a dream come true and uh it was getting dark and uh the one croatian policeman said well you must come back before dark and they were like okay we'll, we'll come back so we did and uh we stayed on the liberty which was parked just north of liberland um and uh, you know it's got several cabins on board the liberty and that was stationed there on the shore for a while and anchored um, so I was, it was a mix of staying on the Liberty and staying in Liberland itself. Uh, we had a settlement set up at Jefferson Square, uh, which is actually turned out to be at the site of the old hunting lodge, which was in Liberland. You could see that in all the pictures, early pictures that we, we used to promote Liberland. You see like an old, a house, an older house, and that was the hunting lodge and they destroyed it a couple of years ago. Uh, but we started clearing out around there and cleaning up the, the piles of bricks and we found there was an intact basement still in that house wow. and we used it for storage um the um a little bit i was there for eight days in liberland in august which was amazing um and uh 
I'm just so proud of the people who made that first step into Liberland and started setting things up. And, and it was just so much enthusiasm and it's still going strong today. We have two settlements now in Liberland. Now, in September, uh, there was an issue where um, the police came in with uh, Hrvatska Shuma, which is the state-owned forestry company in, in, in Croatia, and they destroyed our stuff. They destroyed the, the two or three houses we made. They destroyed the field kitchen. Um, and they just tore it down with chainsaws. And the cops uh, stood stood between us and the forestry people destroying our stuff. Um, and they took all of our, our stuff away, everything that wasn't nailed down. And even stuff that was nailed down, they took away. They hauled it away. Uh, and they took a, probably about $50,000, $60,000 worth of equipment, including generators, fridge, electronics, uh, the, the hardware that we brought in to, to build the, the, the little cabins, um, bikes, uh, Starlink, um, mm. a quad, like a little quad, motorized quad, quad vehicle, um, bikes, and and a bunch of other stuff, and they they just hauled it away. Um, and they didn't even issue any papers. You know, usually when they someone confiscates something from you, you get like a paper or kind of like a receipt, and um, you know. But they said no, this is a cleanup operation. So there's no lists, there's no papers, anything. Navid, our minister of finance, was was on hand for that, and he, you know, demanded from from the forestry guys, "Well, show me the orders you have to do this." And he briefly showed him a piece of paper, and that he could even, you know, look at it for more than a second, and mm -hmm. said, "We're going to do this." And the police uh, basically stood between us and the forestry people taking our stuff away and destroying it. Um, so that was a big blow to us. They came back the next day and and start because we'd start setting up again with right. what little we had left, and they came back the next day and and took what little we had again, uh, except for the Swan, which is a small houseboat we had parked on the shore at the marina. Um, so the settlers uh, were down to like eight people by then, and they had to sleep on the swan and they took turns and rotated and they had all our stuff on the swan. And uh, it was pretty, pretty minimal, pretty bare bones for, for a while, but we had more people coming in uh, to the settlement. And then after that, we decided to, to um, go to Liberty Island and set up another settlement in addition to the one where the swan boat was in the Marina. Um, actually the, the forestry people don't go there because there's no road there. And, um, you know, so we we started setting up camp there. Um, the police say, "Well, you can't camp; it's against the law to camp in Croatia." Hello, we're not in Croatia, <laughs> but right. they're still they're still trying to enforce that, even though we're outside the territorial boundaries of Croatia, and they're giving people fines for camping and things like that. But on Liberty Island, the forestry people don't don't go there. It's not part of the areas they harvest wood from. Uh, so we've had a settlement there for a couple of weeks now, and that's where the wedding took place on Saturday. Which uh, uh, which can be watched, I think, right? If somebody yes. wants to watch it, we'll, we'll put a link yeah. to that in the show notes. Yeah, there's a beautiful video that we just put up, I think, either today or last night uh, that shows the wedding. And um, we got some uh, a, a few aerial shots that uh, we, we flew over during the daytime. And then after we landed... Um, and the helicopters, uh, Vit and I and Tariq, our Secretary of State, and Imran, uh, another good friend who's a Liberlander, we went in a boat and we got to see the wedding party from the Danube. And then we circled around the, the yacht house, which is a very nice vessel that we have in the waters right now. It's anchored in the waters. And then we went up to where the Swan boat is and said hello to our settlers there. We got pretty close to them, even though the Croatians were watching us very closely and watching us and make making sure we didn't uh, go on shore because uh, we were at, technically we left serbia uh left the port in serbia to go up the river and we weren't going to croatia so as long as we stayed in our boat we were we were fine we did right. one passport check with them um but it was really no problem they were fine um, how do they um yeah. that's right because uh, if, if you're entering uh Liberland from hungary then 
there's no issues but i i guess i was wondering how how do they normally enforce that if they i shouldn't say enforce how do they try to uh illegally enforce that is just by checking a passport and and stamps or yeah how? well but the hungary thing nico omilana did that very bravely and very heroically um they would still prevent you from landing a boat uh, even if you came from hungary yeah um, you know they're, they're they're trying all sorts of tricks roundabout ways to to make things hard for us um someone from like the us or canada or uk or australia uh would, would get sent away um by the croatian police if they tried to enter however uh people from the eu people from the eea people from the schengen zone uh can enter liberland uh they show their passport and uh you can walk right in uh, you know after a couple of checks there's two checkpoints usually and sometimes in the settlement, the police will come and and check people's documents to to make sure the head count is the same and agrees with what they last saw there. Um, sometimes they'll wake our people up like at three in the morning, which is a real jerk thing to do. Um, some of the cops are nice. I, I had good conversations with some of them. Some of them don't, you know, don't like us too much but some of them are real nice and a couple of them have asked if they could work for liberland because we'd pay of course we'd pay them more than what they'd be getting currently so <laughs> as far as um the, like the entry the border crossing fee i guess is what you would call is that what you're talking about no well uh we established a border crossing however they took the sign away um i guess it was sort of a they didn't they didn't like that because they want to be in charge uh sure. Um, but, um, um, yeah, basically the border entry is handled by the Croatians, but if you're an EU citizen or from the Schengen zone, uh, we had some, um, you know, even places outside the EU, uh, like, like Norway and Switzerland, uh, they're part of the Schengen zone. So right. uh, you can, you can travel there. England, however, is not. And, uh, of course the Commonwealth countries are not, uh, us is not. Latin America is not. So um, those folks are likely to get a 30 day or 90 day ban from Croatia uh, just for being in the area. We had people who didn't even go to Liberland who got taken to the police station and they got like a piece of paper in their passport that says, you know, pro prohibited from entering Croatia for 30 days or 90 days. In some cases, they'll give you seven days to leave Croatia, which means you can actually go and visit Liberland during those seven days. We had Greg, a guy from Australia, uh, do just that. He got a ban back in August, I think. And uh, once his 30-day ban was up, he tried to go again. And they took him to the station and gave him a 90-day ban, but he had seven days to leave. So he came to Liberland. So he got to visit the Swan and Liberty Island, which was he was so happy to do that. He was staying here at Ark Liberland Village for a while. And now he's going back to sort some stuff out in Australia. Then he's coming right back at, at some point. So. Nice. Well, uh, I'm wondering how how would uh, the police know that you're going to Liberland if you're crossing or entering into Croatia for the first time? Uh, if, if, if it's at one of the border checkpoints near Liberland, like Batina or uh, Erdut, uh, then they might suspect you of going to Liberland. But our people who are there now, uh, have crossed the border recently with no problem. I went with a group. I was taking a group out, and you know they kept us there for a couple hours. Um, two people had Liberland stamps in their home country passports, and they didn't like that at all. Are uh, they Liberland stamps where? In their home country passports, like one person had a Croatian passport with a Liberland stamp, and and they didn't like that. Uh, the border the border guy was flipping through the pages of the passport. Oh, Liberland, come. And and they gave they gave a Croatian person, they, they told her they were going to take her passport away because it had a Liberland stamp in it. And um, another person had one and they were going to fine them something like 250 euros, like 275 bucks, um, mm -hmm. just because they had a Liberland stamp in the passport. It has nothing to do with them. Right. Uh, they're trying to find little ways to needle needles and pins. Um, us and, and making it inconvenient to come to the area. And and my view is, why would they want to prevent tourists from coming to the area? Uh, we spend money. And, uh, you know, I thought Croatia was a tourist-friendly country. 
Uh, a lot of people do like to go to Croatia to some very beautiful places. I've been to Split. I've been to Zadar. I've been to Rijeka, Zagreb. It's a beautiful country, and 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 they just have, um, you know, uh, attack in their rear end when it when it when it comes to Liberland. I wish it were, weren't like that. I wish we could cooperate with them. Uh, I wish we would have good relations with them. We don't want to be antagonistic. It's it's not Croatian territory, and it never has been. Um, their position is that it will either go to Croatia or Serbia. Our position is that it's been unclaimed for, you know, 25 years plus, and it's been basically abandoned, and it's no longer part of Yugoslavia, and it was never part of Croatia. And to begin with, if you look on any Croatian map, it's Liberland, Gornja Siga, is not on a single map of Croatia, neither, you know, in the present or during Yugoslavia times or, you know, prior to that. So... You know, we, 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 we happen to disagree with Croatia um, and we're going to fight it. We're going to take it to the next level and fight it. I've been sending out diplomatic notes to other countries. Uh, we've been sort of corresponding indirectly with, with Croatia. I led a letter writing campaign to Croatian embassies. So we got Liberlanders all over the world to send letters to their nearest Croatian embassy, um, you know, protesting how we've been treated with the, with the attack on our settlement and with the treatment of non-EU people, the treatment of Americans and Canadians and British and, and those kind of folks, um, you know, it's just not normal. Uh, we will want to bring tourism. We want to bring jobs to this area, which is empty. You go to Batina or Zmajevac or some of the little towns around there. Uh, I wouldn't say they're ghost towns, but, you know, it's looked like everybody's gone for the weekend and they're never coming back, you know. There's been a mass exodus from the region because of a lack of jobs in the last 30 years after Yugoslavia fell. Um, you know, it was basically a socialist economy. So, you know, stuff wasn't allocated according to supply and demand. It was allocated according to, OK, well, we should put a factory here or we should, you know, put a business here without uh, measuring the actual demand for such things. Like there's a shipyard here in Apatine. It's almost in ruins, but it's still sort of functioning. Uh, it was built by the state many years ago. And, uh, you know, sadly, there's 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 little demand for it. We want to bring that back. We want to bring demand for boats and maritime industry. We want to bring tourism. We want to bring, you know, all sorts of industry here, high tech, uh, blockchain, you name it. Uh, and I, we have a lot of entrepreneurs involved in Liberland who could do that. And they want nothing more than to be able to do that. We were just hosting a delegation from the United Arab Emirates who is seriously considering investing a ton of money here. But we need to be able to play ball with the Croatians to bring more investment and jobs on that side. Serbia, we've done that to a great extent already. Um, we're still, um, we opened an office in Belgrade last week. Nice. And, uh, you know, that's no problem. I think we'd probably have... Um, would they probably turn up the heat on us some more if we try to open an office in Zagreb, um, you know, with the flag there and everything. Serbia, no problem. Uh, Serbians are very friendly to us. Uh, officially, they have uh, they do not claim the land anymore. It used to be part of Serbia, but they no longer claim it. Um, so Serbia has no problem with Liberland, and we always have a great time here. The people are so welcoming. The food is great. Uh, you've met you met a lot of Serbians yourself. Uh, I invite people. For wherever you are, oh, come and visit it's, Serbia. Yeah, Serbia is fantastic. Um, I, I guess I actually haven't. You know what? <laughs> According to Cro uh, the Croatian police, I have been to Croatia, uh, going to Liberland last year. But um, you know, I think what what can help us move the needle forward with all of this. Well, first of all, we just want to applaud you and and everyone else who's there moving this forward uh the settlers the two settlements it's it's just really cool to see it all come together um but i think a, a big bottleneck and we can get more americans and canadians um on board and really just people from around the world but i think a lot of us and canadian citizens are afraid that if they go to serbia and or however they're going to get into liberland that something's going to happen and it's the end of the world like they're going to get their passport burned and they're never going to be able to travel again um, and from your experience and what it sounds like the truth of what's happening is if you, if you go to go to Lieberland, 
you might face like a seven day or even a 30 day, you know, don't come here period. Mm -hmm. Uh, But no one's taking away your passport. You're not being put on any type of international list. I think we just, we need to help um, let more North Americans know like, Hey, it's, it's okay. You're going to get your feathers ruffled a little bit, but like, there's nothing to worry about. Would you agree with that? Yeah. Yeah. That's a good thing to point out. But, and if you're from Europe, if you're from Germany, France, you know, Scandinavia, you, you will be able to go in there with no problem whatsoever. It's just the hassle of going through a couple of police checkpoints. Um, that's the only thing you, you can come if you're from Europe. However, people living in Europe who are not from Europe, but have residency in Europe, they, they have given them, given them the business too. Like Jay from, he's living in an Estonia. Yeah. Uh, he's an Estonian resident. He lives there with his family and he's got his papers and everything. They gave him a Croatia ban. They banned him from Croatia, even though he didn't even go to Liverland. So he didn't even try to go in. He was and just so helping. How, how, how did they, Um. yeah, how did they? I they stopped they... him in a parking lot where he knew we, he was ferrying people from, from the, the docks to, uh, Zmayevats, where people leave on bicycle to go into Liberland. Oh, right. Funny thing about the bikes. Um, uh, initially, we could drive in cars to Liberland, but then they stopped. They said it was a hunting area. You can't drive here. And then we took, started taking bikes. And it's on an EU-funded bike path, you know. Um, and they said, well, no bikes. That were the same as motor vehicle, no, no bikes. So we had to walk in or take a boat or walk in. So one of our intrepid settlers called the equivalent of nine of of 911 and said look i'm on this bike path and they're telling me i can't be here and it's on this this you know these coordinates and they told him what no you you can bike there it's a bike path and they you know gave the phone to the police and that they told the policeman to let him bike so we were able to bike again nice (laughs) so when we visited swan there were probably about 20 bikes you know up against the trees uh when we visited that settlement on the boat on saturday but we have to lock them up or put them on the swan itself in stacks. So mm-hmm. to make sure the forestry people don't come and clean them up. Um, so, uh, yeah, we, we have to be a little careful with the settlement and what they might do. We, we never know what they're going to do. So I think, you know, what I, what I would recommend, um, and this is all just from personal experience and being there where you're at, at, at the Ark Village, Tom, is if you're someone who hasn't visited Lieberland yet, going to the settlement obviously would be like the number one goal but if you have any form of hesitation or or cautiousness and you just want to i don't know if cautiousness is the right word but um if you just want to check out lieberland i do think that just getting to arc village is enough to get a taste for what's happening you can get some really you know boots on the ground intel and then kind of navigate from there Come, come to arc and we'll give you an orientation i've done several myself um, it's a beautiful place and you can see it at arc.ll.land check out some pictures we have a ton of events here almost every day there's several events per week we had a wedding here at arc we had a chess tournament we have uh, you know soccer matches or football as they call it um, we have cookouts uh, we have presentations our, our mutual friend Nader Price gave a presentation last Saturday and it was awesome or the Saturday before last or was it Saturday yeah the one before last and nice. he's actually here with me your friend and mine <laughs> we'll get him uh, hey he knows he's he's due for another episode soon so <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm so glad you uh helped send him our way uh, I'm not grateful he made great. it he has a fantastic eye for photography and uh He's helped us out by by taking some great photos and video, and he's great at uh, editing and and preparing stuff for for consumption. He's he's got he's great at nature photography, portraiture, uh, you name it, action photography, um, and it's great to have him have him around. So definitely, yeah, come to the park. We we uh, we're we, we're planning a longevity conference pretty soon. I'm going to give a lecture on on some of the. Um, monuments that you can see in the former yugoslavia they have some really surreal huge monuments that were created during the tito era here in former yugoslavian countries like serbia and croatia and bosnia and they just blow your mind they look like something out of a sci-fi movie yeah uh, uh, and you, you, you might have seen some online just look for you know yugoslavian 
surreal monuments and you'll find the, the spomenic database spomenic is the word for the monuments here i'm going to give a presentation on that because they also have them in bulgaria i went briefly went down to turkey in in bulgaria at the end of uh end of august and i i uh I, I did a little tour round trip in bulgaria they have some pretty pretty awesome crazy soviet era monuments down there too and that's what's going to be my presentation probably in a couple of weeks here awesome awesome so um so that way we, we can get some i guess some advertising out for that it's a longevity conference or what what is it that's coming yeah, up yeah that's going to be here at arc i think it's probably more more of a pilot conference so let, maybe let's wait till um uh the bigger one to promote it but i believe it will be in November, November 17, 18. Um, we've got a pretty packed program for it. Um, I, th I think it should be on Liberland social media as it as it develops. Yep. And I that's, think we're gonna yeah. we're gonna have a bigger one in the spring. Awesome. <clears throat> Around the time of the uh the well now I'm trying to remember. Is it our eighth anniversary coming up? Uh it will be Maybe the ninth. Yeah, eight years already. Maybe ninth. Nine. <laughs> Something if it's like 2024, that. it'll be the ninth. Wow. Yeah. And I know Vit, Vit has talked about laying the cornerstone cornerstone for the world's tallest building. Uh, we'll see if we can get that far. That's that's a cool cool vision to have. I think might be a little premature. Uh, you could put it. You could cheat and put it on top of a mountain. <laughs> That'll make it even, even taller. <laughs> um, the um yeah we oh speaking of building things in Liberland Sergio Bianchi the Italian architect has done a beautiful design for the Liberland Hotel and there's a video that he put out on it he actually spoke to our office in Belgrade my trade office when we launched that last week and uh, he's done great work for Liberland he's done a whole Liberland he's done Arc Village design he's um an amazing architect in Rome. And uh, he likes to uh, design harmonious concepts, concepts that are harmonious with nature. And it's just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful visually. And, uh, you know, as far as from the concept goes, um, you know, he's more over, he's more about making uh, very beautiful designs that, that just blend in very well with the natural beauty of the area. And this mm -hmm. area has a ton of natural beauty like nobody has ever seen. This beautiful riverine Danubian forest. It's like, it's called the European Amazon. And I, my, my, you know, I told you about the moment I stepped into Liberland, the moment I mm -hmm. set foot, that was one of my, my first dream come true. My second dream was to bike across Liberland. That's right. And I, and I did it three or four times. Oh, wow. Awesome. And it's amazing. Uh, I biked all the way down to the southern end where we actually have, uh, we've designated that to, to to be a cemetery there. Vit actually buried the the ashes of his late father um, at the southern end of Liberland. And that area uh, will be a cemetery. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's good to know. I, I, I didn't know that. And, and rest in peace to... Uh the father of uh the guy who changed the guy who rocked the world right president yep. Yelichko. um you just reminded me i mean one thing i'm definitely excited about for uh liberland is all of the athletic opportunities that are going to kind of come from this whether it's biking i like to run uh don't don't run quite as much as i used to now uh once once the kids aren't toddlers anymore i'm sure i'll be back at it but you know the liberland uh 5k or something like that always uh it sounded like a good idea to me and um also basketball and all the other uh american sports i guess soccer is guess gonna what have to guess be. what we're having on sunday in, in liberland on liberty island guess what first ever football match and by football no uh, no okay <laughs> women's mma wow in yes, liberland we're, we're bringing some some mma fighters down from czech republic wow yeah, on sunday yeah. And is that how can people is it going to be streamed or anything? Um, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Um, what should we say? If more information, I I, I was going to drop my email for uh, citizenship. Which, by the way, if you want to become a Liberland citizen, you can send an email to citizenship .adam at liberland org. But how can we get people ready for that? Uh, we're already started posting things about it today. Vit has posted something about that, okay. and there may be something on our regular Liberland social medias. Uh, about that 
if if you haven't seen it yet, you'll you'll see it if you follow us That's on so cool. the Facebook, on the Twitter, on the Reddit, and all the other socials. Um, we'll definitely be posting about that. And I did see something already from Vit on on the Facebook. Okay, cool. Well, yeah, Liberlandians, get ready for that. We'll make sure we get this <laughs> this episode out as quickly as possible. Um, that's all the time we have for today's episode, Tom. It's been awesome reconnecting as always. Um, yeah. One, what is the the best way if if anyone does want to reach out and get in touch with you? Um, what's your preferred way of that? And and well, two, you can send it to my Liberland email. I use uh, foreign at liberland dot org. Uh, I mean, there's another government email, but that's the easiest one to remember. Foreign at liberland dot org. Um, and if you're, um, you know interested in coming here um you know write me or you know you can also contact our chief of staff peter at info at liberland.org that's also another way or write both of us and so you know if he's busy i can maybe take it we have a whole staff we have a marketing team we have you know chief of staff we have the Prague office we have the belgrade office now uh we're looking at we are actually looking at opening up some offices over in croatia they'll just be a little um you know, low key, mm-hmm. you know, compared to the ones in other places. So because of the sensitive situation with, with, with Croatia. Yeah. Wow. Uh, very good stuff. I'm looking forward to that on, on Sunday now as well. Yeah. Um, any other, uh, any, any yeah, special I, words of mess, words of wisdom or a message to uh, Lieberlandians around the world? Well, it's my dream to to bring people together in, in diplomatic ways, and we have a great team helping us do that. I want to shout out to to Tariq, Dr. Tariq Abbasi in London. He's our Secretary of State, uh, which which is you know kind of overlaps a little bit with my role, but he has extensive experience in so many countries and great connections. Working together, we we do get a lot done. It was him, he who brought the delegation from UAE here over the weekend. And he's got immense and, and wonderful and deep connections with countries in Africa, Middle East and, and Europe and, and as well as Asia. I'm uh, my background is in, in Europe, Latin America and, and, and North America, of course. Uh-huh. Um, so we complement one another in, right. in our roles. Uh, he's a p- great part of our team. Uh, Michal Potochnik is working on the legal aspects and many other things. Of course, our, our dear leader. Vitya a great leader um, and one of the youngest, uh, if not the youngest uh, head of state in the world. I think there's a few uh, young prime ministers here and there, but I think Vit is uh, one of the youngest uh, heads of state, if not the youngest. So, And and the rest of the people, of course, Bogey, you know, our vice president, Bogey Wozniak, and uh, Daniel Bateman, who's uh, our deputy Mis- minister of interior, uh, Navid, who's our minister of finance, all the representatives uh, you know, from, you know, from, from the U S to Latin America, to here in Europe, to Czech Republic, to Africa. We've got so many great people working, working on our, on our team. Yeah. You know, Sam, Sam Wella, she's always out, out there. Yeah. The name, she's the a brand out there. And also Ani from, from Georgia. And, um, you know, I, I can't even, the, our team here at Arc Village, we've got Vanya, we've got Vlada, we've got Rada, we, you name it, we've got even more Dragon. <laughs> Great, right. great team here on the ground as well. I'm trying to think how many people can we shout out. I'll do one more to uh, my Slovene, my Slovenian uh, Brate Gregor. Brate, yeah, <laughs> Gregor's awesome. He was with me in the first week in Liberland. I believe it. Yeah. Yes, yes. He's yeah. a great resource. He's been actually collecting historical maps of the re- historical and current maps of the region, to- topographical maps, maps that that forestry. Uh, uh, entity uses um you know maps uh geodetic maps uh hydrographic maps wow. he has collected uh, a, a treasure trove a library of 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 maps that are relevant to to liberland and what we're doing phenomenal well tom uh we're, we're gonna have to just keep in mind we got to get you back on here in the near future it's always um, an information dump i think that you know, Liberlandians need to uh, to have access to. So thank you for for all you're doing and sharing your wisdom and knowledge and and just keep uh, keep being the great leader that you are, sir. Well, what we're doing, we're doing with love. And I think that is the, you know, the purest motivation uh, 
to do something and and to live your life according to certain principles and to do it out of you know making make making things better for people yeah agreed all right that's our time for today lieberlandians thank you for tuning in tom walls minister of foreign affairs thank you for investing your most valuable resource with us here today your time our listeners as well and ladies and gentlemen <laughs> We will catch you in the next episode.